priest had to do during the day uh, of atonement or Yom Kippur, and yet at the same time, he had, he had so much to do until he had to rehearse it before that day came. Amen? All right, so um, we're going to talk then about the order of events. Uh, and this is done by uh, Craig Killian. Uh, he explains, this is his study, that he did of, of course, the priest going into the holies of holies. This is a part of his study. So, yes, we had um, at least... Uh, Oh, at least 40, uh, 43 different things that, um, that was done. It says, according to the Talmud, uh, he made uh, 43 trips between the court and the sanctuary on this respective day. Talking about the day of atonement or uh, what else? Yom Kippur or the Sabbaths of Sabbath. Amen. So it says uh, that number one, now here's what he was doing. It says he removed the ashes from the outer altar. And uh, of course, you can find all these things and they all have references, but just to be able to move forward. And then on number two, he immersed himself. How many know you can't go in the holies of holies unless you, come on, get yourself straight. And then you go in there and you gotta, you, before you go in, you gotta baptize yourself. You know, it's an amazing thing that we have baptism before the day come of atonement. And it was only a few of us here, but we enjoyed being baptized. Amen? If it come every year, I want to do it every year. <laughs> Amen. But it, it, it goes on to say he immersed himself uh, for the first time. All right. And he put on a golden uh, vestment. Okay, now number three, it says that he uh, slaughtered the daily morning uh, elevation offering. Now this means that he's doing a lot of work. How many can see that? He's not just in there sitting down waiting or kneeling down or just waiting on the Lord. He's in there actually working because you understand something. He had to make sure that he was right with God and keep the order going. Plus, he was also not doing it only for himself, but he was doing it for the whole nation of Israel. Yes. Did he? Oh, my God. All of the priests would, would get into fasting. In fact, we... Um, the feast, the rabbis, and even down to the children. Uh, we, we could probably get to that a little later. All right? Now, <clears throat> uh, number three, I said he s slaughtered uh, the daily elevation offering. And number four, it says that um, he received and through the blood of the elevation offering all around the altar and so forth, you see? And then number five, he had to remember all these things. Uh, number five, he prepared five lamps of the menorah. How many know how many lamps is in the menorah? Seven, amen, seven. So he, he lights the, the five, okay? 
And I like five because that's a sign of grace. Amen. All right. Number six, he offers the, the daily incense. All right. Number seven, he prepares uh, the remaining two lamps of the menorah. And that makes seven. Amen. Number eight, he burns uh, the the he burns the the limbs of the daily morning elevation offering uh, on the outer altar. Okay, number nine, he offers the the daily meal offering. Number ten. He offers the Coventin uh, offering. And then number 11, he offers the wine libation. I see the women grabbing that before they get to the uh, grape juice. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, so this is another thing that he is doing that he's making sure that everything is in order. Now, number 12, he offers uh, the Musafan. Uh, this is the ox and the seven lambs, all elevation burnt offerings, along with their meal and drink offerings. Are you seeing, man, was he doing a lot of work? And then number 13, he immersed himself again. He, he baptized himself for the second time. And then donned uh, the, the linen vestments. Okay, number 14. Uh, he's, he, it says, do the first confession on the high priest um, ox offering. And so here he's dealing with the ox. And then number 15, he draws the lots to select the he goat for God and the Azazel offering. How many know what the Azazel is about? That's the scapegoat. Amen? Uh, number 16. It says uh, he would do uh, the second confession on the high priest's oxen for the sin offering. And number 17, he slaughters his ox sin offering. Amen? Something? Okay. Number 18, he performs the service of the special young Hakeparim uh, incense. Uh, he scoops up the coals, and B, uh, that was A and B, he scoops up the incense into the ladle. And C, all of this is in this 18th movement. Uh, he burns the incense in the holies of holies. This was the first entrance into the holies of holies. Now, he's just getting to the holies of holies, and he has 18 things he got to get right. Come on now. Okay, number 19, he sprinkles the blood of his ox in the holies of holies. This was his second entry into the holies of holies. Number 20, he slaughters uh, the he goat for God. What did he do? Yeah, he slaughters that for God. And 21, he sprinkles the he goat blood in the holies of holies. Glory be to God. This was his third entry into the holies of holies. Number 22, he sprinkles the blood 
of his ox on the curtain in the holy place. Number 23, he sprinkles the he goat blood on the curtain in the holy place. Number 24, he mixed the blood of his ox with the he goat. Now he's mixing blood. Number 25, he sprinkles the mix on the inner altar. Number 26, that, that was 25. Number 26, uh, do the confession on the he goat and to the Azazel and present the he goat to the designated person uh, for dispatch to the to Azazel, and and also here's another word. He says, it says, this was not a sacrifice. What did I say? This was not a sacrifice, but yet he's doing all of these things, all of this work, and he has to keep it in order. Are you? Who would want to be a high priest? Plus the fact you have to understand that he had to keep all this in order. Don't make a mistake because if he make a mistake, he could lose what? He could lose his life and then he could lose atonement for all of Israel. Come on, somebody. You think that was an easy job? No way. Come on now. Number 27, he removes the entrails uh, of the ox and the he goat and placed them in a utensil. Number 28, prepares the limbs of the ox and the he goat for removal to the burnt place. Number 29, he reads from the Torah. Hallelujah. He began to read from the Torah. Number 30, he immersed himself again. In other words, baptism, he baptized himself for the third time. Not just once, not just twice, but he's going for the third time, and we haven't finished yet. Amen. Uh, then donned the gold vestments. Number 31, he... Uh, performs the service of the he goat sin offering on the Mosafin or Musafin. And then on the uh, on 32, he offers his ram. Now he had a ram. Amen. 33, he offers the people's ram. Look at all these killings, all these things got to be done. So he can offer all these things. How many know he had a lot of people to offer something for? You think he wasn't working? He should have some big muscles by now. Come on, somebody. Amen. All right, 34, it says, uh, burn uh, the intros of the ox and the he goat on the outer altar. Now he goes on, on the outside. And then 35, he immerses himself again. He's, he baptized himself for the fifth time. Come on now. Uh, no, this, is, this is the fourth time, I'm sorry. Immerse himself for the fourth time, uh, then don the linen vestments. And number 36, he removed the incense ladle and the shovel with burnt coals. Listen, I don't know how he kept everything separated and clean. Uh, he burned the coals from the holies of holies. This was uh, his fourth and final entry into the holies of holies. And now look at this, number 37. He immersed himself again. My God, he ought to be a clean brother by now. 
he immersed himself for the fifth time. Then donned the gold investments. And we got a few more to go now. Number 38, he offers the daily uh, afternoon elevation offering. And of course, all of these are burnt offerings. And 39, he, he burns the daily afternoon incense. Number 40, he lights the menorah. Okay, so he's lighting the menorah again. Amen? Now, what I want to give to you is the 10 things, of course, that we, I think we've read something on this before, but we have it in sequence now. It says, uh, because it's three more things. We got 40, we got three more things. It says 10 things uh, would the high priest pronounce the, the name of God on Yom Kippur six times in connection with the bullock, three times in connection with the he goat, and one time in connection with the lots. And it says those who were near him would fall on their faces, and those who were far from him would say, Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Neither those who were near nor those who were far uh, would move from their places until he had uh, disappeared. What are we saying? We have to understand this man had to be perfect in his work. What does that tell us as priests? We, we got we to gotta do what God want us to do so we can make it, folks. And look at all the things he had to keep in mind to do while he was in there and, and, and not make mistakes. My God, I'm so glad I didn't have to do that because I might get the, the goat mixed up with the cow. I don't know. Amen. <laughs> I would be so nervous thinking that I might get something wrong. I might just mess up. Come on now, knowing all the weight that's on my going into the holies of holies. Come on, somebody. Y'all got to get this. Amen. And here we go. Now we talk about the fast. I, I'm, I'm so glad because fasting has been a thing with human beings that has limited, I believe, even the people of God from everybody trying uh, this thing to rush into the presence of God. In other words, to fast, you have to think seriously whether you can really uh, foot the bill. Y'all ain't talking to me. And we're not talking about, when you're talking about afflicting your soul, and when you're talking about getting yourself in a place where God can use you, suppose the first 20, 30, 40 days you're not used with God, are you willing to go back again until? And if he doesn't use you then, are you willing to go back again until? Suppose you get down where you've lost a lot of weight. Are you willing to go back again until? Come on, somebody. See, uh, I, I, I'm going to tell you something, folks. Those who pay the price, you can tell it. Now, I don't mean they paid the ultimate price because Yeshua paid that. But I'm talking about, are you picking up your cross and following him? 
if we were willing, if fasting was an easy choice, all the church be burning with power. But because of the fact that you have really got to be in the place where God wants you to be in order to say, yes, Lord. Come on, somebody. I'll do this and I'll, I'll go, Lord, until you answer me because it's so important, you know, and you love God more than you love your plate. Come on now. Amen. Uh, and and, and, and I, I tell you something, folks. It's not easy. I say it's not easy. Because I know because I've been there. Are, are you all hearing? Amen. Now, uh, let us look at uh, something here about fasting, okay? Is that fasting, uh, the potential prayers, all these things, uh, uh, we must make sure that we are praying and fasting, not just fasting and not without prayer or not prayer without fasting, but doing both of them and calling on the name of the Lord and keeping your mind focused on him. Come on, somebody. The Bible reads uh, the, the formulas of confession, uh, they call it vidui. Uh, and uh, every part of a, the atonement day ritual emphasize this single theme that would uh, relieve one from the, uh, from the burden of sin acknowledgement. Are you all hearing that? The, the transgressions, declaring repentance through the process of confession. So, what we have to do is to make sure we say, Lord, take more of me. Give me more of you. Lord, I can't do it unless you are with me. He gets the credit for everything. Come on, somebody. And then um, we see that as the Lord enables you, you're able to do it because it's no way we can do these things on our own. Amen? Yom Kippur is a time to atone for sin, while fasting is not explicitly mentioned. Listen at this. The Bible ordains uh, for this day. You shall afflict your souls, Leviticus 16, 31, and chapter 23, verses 27 through 32, and the book of Numbers, chapter 29 and verse 7. All of these talks about it, but it doesn't use the word fasting. But it's talking more about afflicting your soul, humbling yourself to the Lord, and those kinds of uh, terminology. Amen? But to the rabbis, this is exactly what it meant to them. But to other people who read this and understand the terminology, realize that it's not necessarily talking about fasting, because it is something you as an individual must decide. Are you all hearing this? If you never decide it, you'll never do it. Amen. Okay, where am I now? Okay, it says, uh, from the early times, the rabbis interpret this to mean fasting. Just what I got through talking about. Part of the afflicting of the soul 
intrudes five statutory rules of mortification. These were uh, abstentions from food. Some y'all y'all repeat these things, cause cause y'all y'all just sitting there looking at me. Come on, uh, abstention from food and drink, marital relations, wearing of uh, leather shoes. Uh, using cosmetics and lotions and washing any part of the body. I guess the ladies heard that. <laughs> Other than the fingers and the eyes. Did y'all hear that? Oh my God. Whatever you touch and whatever you see. <laughs> All right, the pleasures of such bodily comforts is seen as a prime source of, of um, opposing the affliction of one soul. Okay, it says here that the biblical times rendering one's garment and uh, putting on sackcloth and ashes were, were further signs of distress. Accompanying abstinence uh, from food, and this is also said in Jonah 3 and 6, Ezekiel 9 and 5. In other cases, the fasting is clearly implied in Joshua 7 and 5 through 13. And then it says Jeremiah 6, 23 and Lamentations 2 and 10. Y'all let me know when to shut up, okay? Yes. Yes, well you see, she decided. See, they told her what she ought to do and that this was, she might have to be used for such a time as that. But she had to make up her what? Her own mind. Or else she could have failed. And she wasn't going but three days. Y'all didn't hear that. I said, she didn't go but what? Three days, and she asked the rest of them to go what? Three days. See? It's a whole new ball game when you're going for a period of time. But God will never fail you if you stick with it. Because when you come out of it, God is going to do such great things in you if you keep your heart and mind stayed on him Keep a perfect heart, a clean heart. Listen, God would do some things will confound anybody. Are you all hearing this? All right. This is the reason why many churches are not moving in the power is because of the fact that they, the next service they have, uh, what are we going to have? Somebody said chicken. Oh, good. Let's. Come on, you, you see what I'm saying? Every time they come, oh my God, ham. <laughs> this, is, this is what we are talking about. Everybody want to eat, but nobody want to go without food enough to see the power of God move. They, we really love each other, but sometimes we don't love each other enough to give up a meal. Come on, somebody. Amen? All right. So we can see where some of the problems are. Amen? Now, this is uh, another section that's dealing with Jewish customs of the Day of Atonement, uh, even today, I would say. Uh, in modern Jewish use, it uh, says, usage, uh, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, uh, in the 10 days of Or, 
which begins with the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, we previously, Previous chapters, this 10-day period is devoted to the spiritual exercise of penitence, prayers, and fasting in preparation for the most solemn day of the year, the Day of Atonement. All right, the number 10 symbolizes a perfect holiness. What does it symbolize? Perfect holiness. As the aim on the most sacred day of the year, the 10 days of repentance are concluded on the 10th of Tishri. I think I said something about Tishri the last time we were talking about it. Uh, and the vidui, which is confession of sin, begins with the immersion of baptism for repentance. What did we do? One day we were baptizing, the next day then we came in to repent. Come on, somebody. And... Uh, is recited 10 times. Uh, of course, this is uh, what they are saying. Uh, this is recited 10 times on the Day of Atonement to uh, coincide with the traditions that the high priest pronounced the name of God how many times? 10 times when he invoked the divine pardon of Yom Kippurim. We're still talking about Yom Kippur. And then it says in this particular line, it says Yom, Hip uh, Yom Kippurim also recalls uh, the Ten Commandments which serves as advocate, advocates before the Supreme Judge in behalf of the children of Israel uh, who accepted them with love, with what? Love. With love after the nation of the world refused them. Glory be to God. It says many Jews who did not observe any other uh, Jewish custom uh, will refrain from work fast and, and attend synagogues services on the Day of Atonement. So even if they didn't follow all the things that the Jews usually do on that day, uh, or any feast day, they did it on Yom Kippur. All right? In the mart in a modern Israel, this day is the day, is the one day in the year when restaurants, places of entertainment, stores, offices, factories, and even the radio station, television station, close down for more than 24 hours. I mean, they stop everything for their Lord. Man, you take a society like this, if everything closed down, they'd be giving, sending you up one side and, then, and preaching you down on the other. And they will say, why aren't they open as bad as I need something? But they don't know how bad they need God. <laughs> okay. The sacrifices, sacrificial aspect of the Day of Atonement have not been in effect, listen at this, since the destruction of the temple. And how many remember when that was? The destruction of the temple was way back there in 70 AD when, of course, we realized that Yeshua prophesied, said that is the time that you better understand, talk, talking to the Jewish people. Amen. Who have accepted him. It says, however, Jews still observe the day by fasting 
amen, and refraining from all types of work. It is the only Jewish feast day, I mean fast day, that is never postponed if it is, if it, it cor, uh, coincide with a, a Sabbath. Everyone is permitted in the synagogue for the Day of Atonement, even though uh, who have been previously barred. If they've been barred from the church, on that day, they allow them to come in. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. Just the presence of someone confirming their desire to make an amends. See there? That's one thing about God. Isn't he good? Isn't he merciful? Oh, grace. He bought us more grace. Hallelujah. Fasting is the Jewish tradition. Is a religious discipline. What is it? It's a religious discipline involving the abstention from food, from drink, physical pleasure, uh, for the purpose of enhancing spiritual experiences. Can y'all hear that? It's telling you what fasting is. Uh, it says, well, I'll go over it again. It says, fasting in Jewish traditions is a religious discipline involving the uh, abstention uh, from food, from drink, from physical pleasures for the purpose of enhancing spiritual experiences in atonement for sin. So if you're serious about this thing, what are you going to do? Fast. In commemoration of national tragedies, this is another thing it's used for, or as part of a personal petition to God in seeking his help. So if you're really serious about getting God's help, what you do? Go ahead and fast. Let God know, Lord, I love you more than I love my necessary food. Lord, I'd rather die than not to have you leading me. Oh, y'all ain't going to say that one. <laughs> All right now. Okay. Various rabbinic laws are associated with his fasting. The mandatory fast uh, has, uh, have to be observed by all males. Okay, drop your plate. Amen. Hallelujah. Over the age of 13. And a females over the age of 12. S sound like what? What does that sound like? Bar mitzvah and bet mitzvah. <laughs> uh, in other, in, uh, in, 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 in order uh, to train the religious loyalty and self disciplines of younger people, the rabbis encourage the youngsters below the, uh, those ages to observe partial fast. Fasting is not done in order to rebuke oneself. Come on now. But simply to focus the mind on the occasions. To the Jews, entertainment of any salt on the fast day is inappropriate. Did y'all hear that? You don't want any entertainment on the fast day. Amen. Amen. The denial of pleasurable acts during Yom Kippur uh, was designed to focus on moral purification. 
to cause total uh, dedication to the pursuit of moral character rather than bodily comforts. Amen. Sick people may take medicine as small amounts of and small amounts of food and drink on the advice of their doctor or their rabbi. Those who are ill may even be forbidden to fast altogether. That's if you're ill. Amen. Now we get to another section. Uh, Y'all tired of me? <laughs> Amen. Well, there's so much more to go. Amen. Uh, oh, okay, okay, all right, okay. Uh, well, next time we can go to uh, the eve of the Day of Atonement. The eve of, y'all help me to remember that. 